good evening everyone. Uh, this is the sixth meeting of Universitas Terbuka. Jadi hari ini kelas ke-6. Terima kasih sudah datang. Di tengah segala kesibukan. Terima kasih juga meskipun hari ini ada beberapa yang cuma bisa mendengarkan, tidak bisa menjawab, tidak bisa tanya jawab, tapi saya bersyukur Bapak Bapak semua datang. Semangat ya yang kerja. Oke, sebelumnya saya mau menyapa dulu ada siapa aja yang datang. Ada Mbak Ani, Mas Arifin, Mbak Leti, Mbak Ruhati, dan Mbak Sri Lestari. Terima kasih sudah datang. Selamat malam semuanya. Masih semangat kan kelasnya? Oke. Okay. Nah, hari ini kita belajar. Kok tumbuh sedikit ya yang datang ya? Uh, muridnya kan 13. Apa masih kerja ya yang segini? Uh, loh mas itu nggak satu kerjaan sama mas Heru? Oh beda tempat, beda beda pabrik atau beda tempat atau beda dua-duanya? Oh uh, mas juga kerja di pabrik? Oh di pabrik apa mas? Pabrik permen. Oh. Ayo bayangin uh, itu Charlie ada coklat gambar di dalam pabrik permen. <laughs> Berarti hari ini oh, tadi siapa aja yang bisa ya? Mbak Ani hari ini bisa aktif ya? Mbak Ani bisa aktif. Mbak Leti juga bisa aktif, Mbak Ruhati juga bisa. Oke, jadi saya nggak ngomong sendiri nanti. Soalnya kan aneh kan kalau misalnya saya ngomong sendiri, jawab sendiri nggak jadi kelas dong. Oke, sekarang kita mulai ya, karena hari ini pertemuan ke-6. Uh, I would like to ask about your reading activity. How far do you read? Gimana? Masih mau baca? Mbak Leti masih baca Sekarang baca apa mbak? Huh? Mm-hmm. Would you mind to share? Uh, just a short one, maybe five minutes. Uh, what do you remember about this? And please share your thought, your experience, and a little bit about the story. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Oh, nice. 
Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a very short story. Do you like it? Like, do you like the crazy story like this? Like everything, all this ended with it beautiful and happily ever after. Do you like this story? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mbak Leti. Terima kasih. That's a very nice story. Thank you. So keep it up. So keep your reading. So next week, we are waiting for the new story, another story. Thank you. Sekarang selanjutnya, siapa lagi yang mau cerita nih? Sebelum kita mulai kelas, Sa satu lagi deh. Mbak Ani atau Mbak Ruhati atau Mas Arifin. Siapa dulu yang mau cerita? <laughs> gitu ya, lembar-lembaran ya. Berarti nanti habis Mbak Ani terus Mas Arifin ya. Mbak Ani mau cerita dulu? Would you mind to share your experience? Wah, Mbak Ani nggak ada suaranya nih. Atau Mbak Ruhati? Ini ada murid baru ya, namanya LXHA. Oh, Mbak Ika. <laughs> Soalnya tulisannya IXHA, jadi kayak siapa ya? <laughs> <laughs> Terima kasih Mbak sudah mengkonfirmasi tapi Halo Mbak Ika selamat datang. Coba Mas Arifin dulu yang cerita. Lo kenapa belum baca ya? Mbak Ani, Mbak Ika, Mbak Ruhati, uh, would you mind to share your reading experience for this week, please? Halo, ada yang mau cerita dulu? Ya, silahkan, Mbak Ani. Mm -hmm. So what did you read? Mm -hmm. What is it about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Then, so what do you think about this? Like, because the education in Finland is very famous with the best education ever in the world. So, what do you think about this compared to the quality of education in our country? Mm -hmm. You can learn from them then. Hmm. Nice. Thank you for sharing. So, sekarang kita mau duduk kelasnya ya. Nanti habis ini akan saya lanjutkan lagi. So today, because this is the sixth meeting, and last week, do you still remember what we learned last week? Masih ingat nggak minggu kemarin kita belajar apa? Minggu kemarin kan kita belajar tentang main idea and supporting idea. Main main idea, supporting idea. And now we learn about inference. What is inference and how to make inference? Secara arti dulu inference itu artinya Arti dari inference sendiri adalah uh, mencari, guessing. Nah, how to make an inference? First, we need background knowledge. Nah, ada tau kan background knowledge itu apa? We need two things, background knowledge and text clues. What is it? Background knowledge, it means that you already know something related with the text. For example, when you read a romantic novel, then you already know. Uh, commonly, the story, the flow of thought, the flow of story in romantic novel will be There are two couple. There are a couple that fall in love. At first, maybe they hate each other, then they fall in love, and suddenly there is a problem between the couple. Then at the end, there will be a conflict, and those actors will solve the problem. So this is background knowledge. Or for example, like the last time we mentioned about politics. When you have a friend talking about politics, then when your friend didn't know anything about politics, then it will be difficult to you to have a lift, a lift discussion with your friends. So background knowledge is important. At least you know something about the target, the topic that you are discuss. Jadi background knowledge itu kata lainnya adalah uh, pengetahuan dasar tentang sebuah teks. Nah, yang kedua yang perlu dibutuhkan dalam membuat interference adalah text clues. Apa itu? Clues itu kan ciri kata kunci. Kira-kira si penulis itu ingin menyampaikan apa di kata kunci itu? Nah, why is it important? Ada yang bingung baca kan? Saya minta tolong dong kenapa... Tolong dibacakan why it is important the interference.
Okay, thank you. So, this is very important. Why? Because when you infer, it means that you are able to conclude or predict or having a new ideas. So, inferring covers conclude, predict, and also new idea. Jadi, ketika kita membuat in, infer, inference, inferences, kita tuh bisa nanti membuat konklusi kesimpulan. To summarize what you are read, and also report report to your friends what knowledge you got from the text. Nah, apa yang paling penting untuk interference? Berarti yang paling basic. Misalnya, uh, when you read something, when you you when you read a text or article from internet. What factors that influence your ability to make conclusion? Kira-kira faktor apa saja yang mempengaruhi kemampuan Anda untuk membuat kesimpulan? Nah, biasanya faktor-faktor yang pertama adalah vocabulary understanding. That's very important. You couldn't make any conclusion or you couldn't comprehend every single sentence without understanding a vocabulary. Kita nggak mungkin bisa paham, kita nggak mungkin mampu bisa membuat kesimpulan kalau kita tidak tahu dulu kosakata-kosakata kata yang dipakai kan. Jadi, understanding vocabulary is very important. Then the second one, we need to comprehend about grammar rule. Why? Even Even we understand every single word, but if we don't possess any grammatical rule, it might it might cause it might cause some another problem. Jadi mungkin itu akan membuat masalah-masalah lain. So we are not able to predict. Nah, sekarang kita mau latihan ya. Eh, uh, Nah, uh, di sini saya punya empat teks. The title is Are We Losing the Art of Conversation? Apakah kita kehilangan seni dalam berbicara, ber, bercakap-cakap dalam berkomunikasi? Nah, there are four people giving their opinion. So, there are four opinions. And now, we will read through each conversation no. We will read through each idea. We will read through each opinion. Kita akan baca dulu dari setiap opini-opini. Dan kemudian setelah itu, uh, we will make an inferences. Kita akan membuat uh, sebuah inference. Kira-kira ini tentang apa? So, ada empat teks. Saya akan butuh empat orang untuk membantu saya membaca. Any volunteers? Siapa dulu yang mau bacakan? Ada A, B, C, D. And there are four phrases, four paragraphs. Silahkan, nggak usah malu-malu. Ya, 
email. Thank you. Terima kasih, Mbak Ani. Okay. Before we go to the next paragraph, please digest first. Tolong pahami, sambil, tolong pahami lagi uh, the paragraph A. Jadi sebelum kita moving to the B paragraph, silakan baca sekali lagi yang paragraf A. Pahami dulu. Do you have any difficulties in understanding this text? Di sini kan ada kan kalimat the talk certainly gave me plenty of food for thought. Uh, maksudnya ini di sini makanan itu bukan berarti literally makanan yang bisa dikonsumsi, tapi idea. People are constantly multitasking. Do you know multitasking? It means that one person can do several tasks in one time. For example, while While you are listening to the lecture, you also play a game, then you talk to your friends. That's multitasking. Kemudian, so uh, the person A focus on how technology help us to be multitasking. Sometimes, see. Kids fade into the background as parent message at dinner table or post on social media network during the school run. It's as if we can't bear to miss out on what our online bodies are up to, so we juggle the real and online world. So sometimes we, we couldn't differentiate between online world and also real world. Nah, ini fokusnya yang A. Sekarang yang B. Ada yang mau bacakan yang B? Silakan. Okay, thank you. So, do you think this is interesting? Uh, do you have any difficulties in understanding this? Ada kesulitan nggak memahami yang B ini? Mm -hmm. Nah, ini ini namanya idiom. It was fascinating, fascinating the talk, and the speaker really hit the 
nail on the head with a couple of things. Jadi uh, obrolan itu benar-benar membuat menggubah. Oh, what do you think about this? Can you go to the last sentence? Last sentence. They arrange the feet and then sit together in silence while each other, each one engages. Is this also happen to your life? Sometimes meeting with friends, but we just kept quiet because we we were busy. Sometimes people who are active on social media are less less active on the real life. Do you agree with that? Kadang orang-orang yang aktif di sosial media itu di kenyataannya enggak seaktif itu. Do you agree or you disagree? <laughs> Do you have an experience about this? Can you tell me? Could you tell us the experience? Apa-apa, silakan. I want to know your experience, or I want to know your opinion about this. Like people, sometimes we meet each other, but we don't talk. But we were too busy. Pakai bahasa Indonesia dulu nggak apa-apa. Nggak ada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, terus nanti ngecek gak yang nge-like siapa aja yang udah ngelihat siapa aja oh, biasanya orang yang disuka atau orang yang lagi nggak disuka bikin statusnya nyindir atau bikin statusnya biasa Kepoin. Yes, yeah, that's true. Uh, I think last two weeks ago, I tried to reduce my my social media usage. So I refrained for from Instagram. I didn't open my Instagram for about five days. At first, it was difficult, but after after five days. I felt different, like, I just thinking that I didn't need to open Instagram all the time. So, have you ever tried this? Pernah coba gak? Gak buka Facebook selama satu hari. Satu bulan. Wow. Gimana, Mbak, rasanya? Hmm. Kalau ada yang pakai Instagram kan di sini. <laughs> Bisa ya kalau ketemu ya terus aktif gak di Instagram? Ah oh, oke. Okay. Seberapa sering? How often do you use Instagram?
Do you upload pictures? Okay, thank you, sir. Now let's continue to the C paragraph. Silakan. Is you? Okay. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Do you agree with this idea or not? The person talking about this. Uh, let's go to the the third the third line. I don't think this is such an issue for my generation who live without technology for so long. It means that. The speaker was quite old. We know how to be alone. And more importantly, we know that it's okay to be alone. Sometimes, after, after using so much time for, on social media, we, we will feel awkward or we will feel different or something different when we refrain from social media. Jadi, karena terlalu sering melakukan social media, sometimes kita berpikir kalau kita merasa aneh ketika kita nggak pakai social media kita atau nggak kita ngetok HP. Tapi this speaker began, I think he or she was old enough that when he said that for my generation to live without technology for so long, that's okay to be alone, and it's okay as well to be alone. Di under 20s, kira-kira untuk anak yang berumur di bawah uh, 19 ini, are another kettle of fish. Another kettle of fish itu ungkapan artinya beta jenis. They are so busy communicating that they never experience the feeling of solitude. And run the risk of not learning how to enjoy their own company. Do you think the way you talk, the way you communicate with your friends through social media and in real life, different? Do you speak different way in different way, or do you act in different way between social media and also real life? Apakah anda berkomunikasi dengan cara yang berbeda di social media dan di dunia nyata, atau sama saja? the same way mm -hmm. what about others do you speak the same way or do you have a different behavior right? the way you speak in social media is more open than the real life or the opposite For me, I communicate in different ways. I speak, I speak more of more open, and I am more open in the real life than in my social media. Because I just thinking that social media only for fun. I couldn't say anything on social media. I should be wise.
in describing something i should be wise and sharing something on social media so i should be careful i talk less on social media than the real life <laughs> because in real life i can meet people in person and i can share my feeling my my thinking with my friends and i can get the response That's my opinion. And now the D one. Ada yang membacakan yang D? Silakan. Hmm. Okay, thank you. So what do you think about this? Do you agree with this? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you agree with this? Which part do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is these are the four ideas from four different speakers. And now the question is who shares a few that we simultaneously spend our time in different worlds? Jadi pertanyaannya adalah siapa yang punya pendapat bahwa kita lebih sering kita tuh terus menerus berkomunikasi di waktu di dunia dua dunia A B C or D siapa yang who share you B How do you know that? Jawabannya benar Mas B. Kenapa? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. 